Hello everybody, my name is Python and welcome back to another episode here of the Let's Play series. As always folks, I do want to say a massive thank you for all of the support you guys showed in the last episode. I really do appreciate it. That and the support for the entire series so far, it really does go a long, long way. Now of course my friends, if you do want to continue supporting the series, do be sure to drop a like. And if you want to go one further, use code Python when buying any sneak energy drinks or any of the Apex gaming PCs I have. So starting off here with 31 levels we are basically going to be enchanting books from hence here forth so let's see what we get power four do you know what that's at oh wow that's actually really really good i mean yeah we can upgrade this thing up to power five so here's our anvil eight levels will grant us power five i mean look at this stuff man it's all top tier aside from this which needs spike five on it but yeah it's looking good. We've got a really good set of gear, haven't we, guys? So, in today's episode, ladies and gentlemen, we are going to be working on the multi-barn here, which is going to have five times sheep wool uh, shearing farm things. It's also going to have, like, a manual cow farm, and eventually, once we get the iron farm set up underground, the output chest is just simply going to be here. And believe it or not, once again, I've created this build already in a creative test world. We are largely using the same block palette as this building here and to be honest that theme is going to continue throughout all of the builds here because in my opinion it just gives the town a bit more cohesion it sort of makes sense to me so yeah I'm, I'm looking forward to it my friend so we need spruce we need dark oak and would you look at this I've been doing a freaking ton of wood chopping you know that meme well I did some mining off camera well in my case it's I did some chopping off camera so to be honest with you guys the sheep shearing farms are going to be incredibly easy to make to the point where I could actually make them on camera with you guys. So it is gonna be fantastic. Now the first thing I need to do is actually extend this a block to my left because this isn't big enough so far. So actually let's go ahead and make a bit of a start shall we. So we have, this is indeed spruce wood so we're gonna go ahead and do a little bit of this. We're gonna put down some spruce wood everywhere. It's gonna be fantastic my dudes. Alright so then we need one just here and then basically wherever this cobblestone is going to be where there is going to be a support and then we merely replace the coarse dirt here with the beautiful dark oak planks wait hang on that doesn't need to be there now ah, this is the edge of the build there we go haha <laughs> fantastic so yeah so far so good and of course let's not forget because we're hashtag proper builders around here we do not want to have dirt slithers underneath the freaking wood it looks terrible, man. We ain't doing things by no half measures around here. No, 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 fam. We do things properly. That's what we do. Yeah. All right, so let's go ahead and get the floor in next, which, to be honest, is just going to be even more dark oak. So after a nice little snoozy woozy, what we're going to do is we're going to make ourselves all of the required components for the sheep farm, and it's going to be super freaking simple. So we're going to need ourselves observers, dispensers, and some various other bits and bobs. And to be honest, the dispensers are going to be super easy to make because, would you know it, we should have ourselves a whole bunch of bows in here. There we are. So, here we are. We have dispensers. Uh, dropper? Wait, what? Oh, interesting. Okay. So, the dispenser with a not fully repaired bow doesn't come up in the recipe book. However, you can still make them. How peculiar. Ah, huh, okay. Well, in which case, we just put the dropper in there, and then we just chuck a bow in there, and bada bing, bada boom. You're all done and ready to go. Well, the good news is we don't have to worry about getting sheep. They're all here. Look at this. We've got loads of them, man. Fantastic. <laughs> the bad news is we need to head into the nether to get ourselves the quartz to be able to make ourselves the observers, which, I don't know, I feel like I should have quartz somewhere, but apparently not? Question mark? I don't know. All right, well, here we are back in the nether realms. Oh, oh, we don't have any gold armor on. whoops a doodle all right, well, we've got to be careful in which... Go oh, hello. Oh, boy. Here we go. Oh, you want to go, do you? All right, come on, then. You want to try it? You want to try it? I just need a tiny bit of quartz here. We're fortuning it, of course, because why wouldn't I? And there we have it. I mean, even that should do the job. All right, we're done. All righty, five observers coming right up. There we are. Right, now what we're going to need is a fairly significant amount of hoppers. We're also going to be needing mine carts, or more specifically, five mine carts. Oh, look at that. We've actually already got one. Huh, okay. 
Cool. I very much like that. Uh, we've got a couple of chests in there already. All right. Let's try and get ourselves all the things we need. Wow. I always forget just how expensive hoppers really are because we're going to be needing the hoppers in the minecarts as well as hoppers underneath the minecarts. And, well, the TLDR of it is we don't have enough iron. We are we're totally out, in fact. Oh, boy. <laughs> Uh, good thing this is 1.16 and therefore we can get iron in plentiful supplies without too much effort. So then, as with most farms, we're going to be starting off here with the output chest, which is going to be added into the floor here. And then what we need to do is we need to add in all of the hoppers. Well, as many hoppers as we can at this particular point. So we're going to be needing ourselves four more hoppers. Okay, so at least 20 bits of iron will be required. Okay, so we've got ourselves the rails. Uh, we're going to have one cell here. Here, one cell here, one cell here. There'll be a cell right on in there and one right there. And then above the rails here is going to be a grass block. We're going to have ourselves a line of grass blocks. And the reason we have ourselves a line of grass blocks as opposed to just a grass block on top of each area is so that the grass blocks in between can spread to the ones that are actually going to have the sheep on them so they can continually eat the grass. And that's basically the fact of the matter. That's all we need it for. So there we are. We do a little bit of that. Now, here is where the observers come into play. We add the observers with the little redstone butthole facing out the back here. And that is going to detect whether or not the grass has been eaten or not. And then we add in a cobblestone block, which will go ahead and conduct the redstone signal. And then we add a little bit of redstone on top like that. And finally, a dispenser, which is going to go here. And this dispenser is going to contain shears. Uh, so actually, we're going to need even more iron than I initially thought. <laughs> Side note, I don't know if you guys noticed already, but one of the things I have done between episodes is organize the sawmill a little bit. We've actually got item frames in here now, and as you can see, we have leaves and saplings. You can see we've got the oak leaves and then spruce saplings, so oak and spruce is in here. So that's kind of the organization that I've gone for here. So this one is birch leaf and then dark oak sapling. So there it is. And finally, of course, we are going to need to get ourselves acacia and jungle to put in these ones as well. And then these chests here are basically for like all of the wood materials and whatnots you can make with each type of wood. So, yeah. Yeah, I think I did a pretty good job of organizing all that. Yeah, I'm not too fussed about it whatsoever. So, what we're going to do is we're going to add ourselves a little bit of fencage. And that is going to look pretty darn cool. And then I was thinking of adding in some little loggies here. Rather like so. Uh, perhaps I go ahead and put like an upside down stair there or something. Oh, that could be a cool idea. We'll figure things out as we go along. Although I say that, and like I said before, I created this in a creative test world. So actually, ha! Python, you done played yourself, you numpty. All right, all right, all right. So if my calculations are correct, at least 30 iron is required. So actually, we've already got three. So 27 more, and we will have enough needed for the hoppers and all five pairs of shears. So I guess it's back down underground we go. Ah! She whiz! Hello! <laughs> Do you mind not starting off my little mining trip by making me poo my pants? I mean, that would be fantastic. There we are! 28 bits of iron! Believe it or not, we've actually got enough. However, I am still trying to do the whole lighting up the caves thing around here. So, yeah, I mean, we've got ourselves a bit of a ledge thing going on here. Maybe we go ahead and try and grab this iron up here as well. I mean, why not? <laughs> oh, hey, more! Nice! <laughs> Oh, yeah, now we're freaking finding iron out of the freaking wazoo now. Oh, my God. Look at all the iron. There's lots of it. Oh, my goodness. Python the Iron Goblin is very happy right now. Oh, man. My diamond senses are tingling big time, man. Come on. I know there's got to be some down here. There's got to be some down here, right? Well, my diamond senses may have been wrong on this particular occasion. However, da -da -da -da, look at it do. We have ourselves a mine shaft. Well, how do you do? <laughs> oh, this is cool, man. All right, well, if I was to maybe take the... Wow, that's actually really not far away from zero, zero at all. Negative 4,100. 
Easy money. I mean, I should be able to find my way back here pretty darn easy, like. And then we could do a proper little exploration session over here. See what kind of amazing stuffs may reside down in that mine shaft. Oh yeah. All right, all right. I wound up getting more near two stacks of iron. I mean, yeah. <laughs> As I mentioned, I just want to light up the caves, man. You know, we keep doing little nuggets of lighting up here and there. And eventually, it's just going to be done in no time, isn't it? Oh, yeah. If you didn't notice already, there's now no longer any ores. I kind of fortune mined them all. Um, this is the supply we have now. And it's a lot, isn't it? <laughs> Look at that, man. That's a lot of coal and redstone, isn't it? Oh, no. Oh, no, 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 no! Ooh! Ooh! You son of a gun. If he blew that up. Oh. Oh my goodness. I would have been a mad pythonator. I would have been so mad. So, getting right back to it. Let's get some shears added into these here dispensers. Uh, moving on. We do have ourselves the remaining hoppers here. So, I need to get those added. I did. Oh, right. Yeah, I need to, like, get rid of that as well, don't I? Yes, that would do the job, wouldn't it, Python? You freaking numb nuts. Uh, so, yeah, we've got the rails. We can start adding in these here minecarts as well. There we are. And to be honest, they shouldn't ever wind up moving. I mean, nothing should ever wind up moving them. So, we should be okay. So, we get that added in. We can go ahead and get the remaining couple of hoppers here. Okay. And then, of course, another rail. And the final minecart with hopper. And bada bing bada boom. That's all we need. That's the entire farm sorted. All we need to do now is actually get some sheep in. Which thankfully we can do in two ways. We can use leashes or we can use wheat. And yeah, this should be pretty much done. And then we can work on the actual rest of the building as well. So needless to say, we need to go ahead and add in some glass rather like this. So the sheep aren't able to move. I'm sorry sheeple. But uh, this is not a farm. Um, where you're going to be free to move. No, 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 no. I need your wool. I need your woolsy doodles. All right. Well, there we are. So that's going to be one, two, three, four, and a five. Fantastic. So as I mentioned, all we need to do is get the sheep in. Now, unfortunately, in terms of the build itself, similar to this one over here, we do not have any brown dye, which I really freaking want. <laughs> It's so annoying, man. We have to find a jungle in order to be able to finish these builds off properly, man. Oh, it's so annoying, isn't it? Oh. I mean, the, this interior glass here, just for holding the sheep in, I don't mind that being clear, actually. Because we'll be able to see the sheep a little bit easier, and it just looks kind of cool, I guess. But the exterior, the actual infrastructure itself, I want it to be brown stained glass, because I feel like that's just going to work way better with this area. Maybe a culmination of brown stained glass and some sort of murky green stained glass as well. Alright, so, we have ourselves some various coloured sheep around here. Can I dye them white? Oh, I can. Huh. You know, I could have sworn at one point in the game you couldn't dye sheep back to white. So, yeah. That's actually kind of nice. I like using white as a bit of a base color because then you can literally make it into any other color, right? You can do, like, red or blue or purple or whatever the devil you feel like doing. Let's see if I can get him to, like, come all the way over here. And then we'll just do, like, the furthest ones first. Right. Here we go. Right. Here we are. Go, 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 go. go on. Yeah. Oh, wow. That was actually really easy. Huh, thanks for making it easy there, broski. Yeah, ain't no creepers getting in here now, you sons of guns. Ha <laughs> ha, I just heard a little snippety snippety. Yay, look at this, it's already working. Fantastic. <laughs> All right, four sheep to go, and the sheep farm area is done pretty much. Yay, two out of five. Come on, mountain sheep. Come on. Some of you guys will remember that reference, huh? Three out of five. That's four out of five. And there we are. All five sheep are now in the farm. And oh, would you look at that? We've got ten wool already. <laughs> so I think the immediate usage for this farm is going to be, what, beds for the nether to get nether right. Ooh. See, that's a cool idea, isn't it? Alrighty, let's go, Shadow. We're going cow hunting. Hopefully, they're not too far away. Oh, would you look at that? There's a couple cows in this pen. How fantastic is that? <laughs> All right, well, we just got to get ourselves up. Look, there's like pigs and sheep in here too. 
That's cool. Follow the shadow, shadow, shadow. Follow the shadow. Oh, yeah. All right, in you come, fellas. Oh, I just realized something a bit silly. Uh, <laughs> yeah, I should probably do that, shouldn't I? <laughs> I could just easily get out, couldn't I? Oh, I'm so dumb. All right. Okay, there we are. You're all done now. There we go. Right, I want my, I want my, I want my lead back. Thanks, bud. All right, now for the fun part. Adding in the roof. <laughs> now I don't know about you guys, but I've always absolutely hated doing roofs in Minecraft. I always feel like they take up more resources than the actual build itself. Like, am I, am I the only one who thinks that? I don't know, man. I don't know. I mean, yeah, some people can do roofs absolutely no issues. But this guy, ugh, I usually wind up doing the same thing over and over again. Let's just be honest here, guys. Oh, boy. All right, guys. So talking of roofs, one of the things I didn't really do in the previous episode where I made this building is I didn't really add any height variation into the roof. Is. So we got like a nice uniform roof going on here. However, I think it would look even better if we added in just a tiny bit of height variation. You know what I'm saying? Make it look even more messy. I mean, why the heck not? Maybe we can add ourselves a block in like that. Uh, maybe we can add in just a little something something up there. And then obviously, so we don't have ourselves like a flat roof up here, we can add even more height variation. Yeah, something like that, huh? Okay, yeah, I can, I can see this working pretty well. Except that, that didn't work very well, did it? All right. Yeah, nice messied up building. I do love it so. And with a few little bits of design trickery and jiggity pokery, we should be able to have ourselves something that looks really quite decent. So we've got some lanterns going on here. We've got ourselves a lantern that could probably go on here as well. And then of course we've got the inside ceiling to contend with as well. But to be honest, I mean, most of it's already kind of flat. We should be able to just sort of do something like that. Uh, potentially add in some logs like this. So there's like a nice separator. We'll add in some lanterns up here. Because why not? There we are. Now, of course, eventually, as I mentioned, brown stained glass, green stained glass, all that kind of dealio. It's going to look fantastic. And then, yeah, we've got this little area to do as well. Uh, I mean, I'm kind of all right just leaving it like that. Although maybe one thing I can do is add in some beams. It might just break up the textures just a tiny little bit, right? Yeah. All right. Huh. Yeah. Do you know what? This is looking kind of nice. All right, let's get rid of this temporary staircase here, which we used, of course, to bring in the sheep. And there we have it. Guys, it's pretty much there. Nice. Now, as I mentioned, this is going to be the output chest for the iron farm. So do you know what? Should we try and figure that out right now? I feel like that'd be a cool idea. So to be honest, this should be incredibly simple. We really don't need a large amount of space at all for this. So all I was thinking is maybe we have like the water source there. It actually comes up this area here, right? And then the water source will be there. It will push the items as they come up the bubble elevator into the eventual hopper, which is going to go right on in here. Yeah, all right. And then I was thinking maybe at the side here, we could have some like additional storage for the iron farm. Uh, so for example, let's say we're going to go ahead and make a whole bunch of the iron ingots into blocks. We could put them in here, right? Pretty cool idea. So all we're going to do now is we're just going to add in some slab of roos. We can still access the output chest right there. And then very, very simply, we just add in the water source like that. So yeah, because of the gap that's going on here, yeah, it means that the water won't be going on top of the hopper here. So yeah, everything is perfect. So if I was to give it a bit of a go, whoop, there we go. It goes straight into the output chest. Yeah. Hey man, you gotta love it when a plan comes together, huh? <laughs> that's literally all we need, man. So yeah, this is, I guess, the output water elevator stream for all of the items. Like I mentioned, they pop up here. The water here pushes them across into the hopper. And there you go. They're inside the chest. Fantastic, isn't it? Absolutely fantastic. So yeah, all in all, ladies and gentlemen, the barn build is largely finished. Aside from, of course, the windows. Oh my god, we really need to find the jungle, guys. We really do need to try and find the jungle, don't we? But I tell you what, maybe we do like a massive exploration episode in the next episode. And we're going to try the Project Pokemon catch all the types that die in the game. 
All right, what do you guys think? I mean, obviously, when it comes to black dye, we're not going to go for Wither Roses because that's quite frankly ludicrous at this particular stage in the game. So instead, we're just going to kill ourselves a bunch of Squidwards. Yes. <laughs> There's an iron guy in here. Yeah. Oh, how's it going? Do you know what? Should we do CD time? I think we're going to go do CD time. Hello. Go on. Go on. Let's see if we can get some CDs, huh? This is how I've been getting my CDs so far, guys. I literally just stay here. The skeletons gain a sight line on me and they just kill the creepers and it's super easy <laughs> this was totally accidental by the way but it works a treat well i can see a cd on the floor right there uh is it one we've already had i guess that's the real question all right what do we got in here wait do you know what i think that might actually be one that i don't have we've got meadow here a couple more times uh all right let's check around the back here uh nothing 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 Oh, man. <laughs> oh, we must be getting kind of close. Huh? Let's check on our little CD supply. Oh, we've already got 11. Ah, oh, darn it. All right. Well, yeah, weight was one that we didn't have. That's kind of cool. Well, as always, ladies and gentlemen, to finish off today's episode, we have the comment of the day. Kush Vicaria says, Hey, Python, what about making the Zero Zero house as an eventual map house and make a second story to the village on top of the hilly area? Big fan. Love you, vids. Hey, buddy, appreciate the kind words. And yeah, I really like that idea, making the Zero Zero house into some sort of big cartography map wall type dealio. It kind of makes sense, doesn't it? You know, the origin of the world and, you know, when you guys eventually get map downloads for this place, I want you guys to be able to find your way around, you know, really easy like. And going back to zero zero to find a map just seems like a logical thing to do, doesn't it? In terms of adding another story to our town settlement here, um... I don't know just yet. I don't know just yet. I mean, it kind of reminds me of uh, Flora Valley version 2 that we did in Python Plays Minecraft, huh? You know, we had like a bottom section of the town and then we had a top section of the town. I don't know if I want to colonize the top area just yet, man. I kind of want to do like a little bit of terraforming and make this into like a proper entrance. I mean, it's a very, very wide entrance at the minute. I'd like to make the hills sort of come in a bit closer to each other and then yeah sort of inside this area is almost like a hidden town obviously i mean hidden aside from the fact that there's a ginormous water tower there but yeah i don't know man i don't know is my honest answer to that comment it's a nice idea but it would take a lot of resources and a lot of time to do, huh? So what I think I'm going to do is I'm just going to focus on like one thing at a time for now. And that thing at the moment is getting this bottom town sorted at the very least, okay? And then we'll see where our inspiration leads us, all right? <laughs> Sound good? I think that sounds like a cool idea. As opposed to getting freaking, you know, swamped with projects like I usually do. Uh, oh, what is he doing up there? Okay, well, you do you there, Enderman. <laughs> but as always, my friends, thank you so much for watching. If you haven't already and you've enjoyed this episode at any point, do be sure, of course, to drop a like. I'd very much appreciate it. It helps out myself, the channel, and the video really quite massively. Like, truly, it does, my friends, and I very much appreciate it. Hit the subscribe button if you haven't already so you don't miss out on my future episodes. But for now, thanks for watching, guys. Have a fantastic rest of your day, and I'll see you guys in the next episode.